Do you know what I mean by that? So let's say something comes up in me. I get hurt by somebody. Um, hurt could even be by me. Like you get hurt by me. You feel hurt from what I've said or done. All right? What do I do with that? Well, what I will do is if, if I'm not humble is I'll instantly get angry with the person. So that's a good indicator. How often am I angry? If I'm angry quite a lot, then that's a good indicator that I'm yet to actually fully choose to be humble. Now, I'm not saying to not feel the anger, because you do need to feel the anger. So please don't think that I'm saying, if you're angry, you're bad or naughty. What I'm saying is, anger is an indication that I'm not being humble. Now, to be frank with you, anger with God is the biggest indication that you're not being humble. So you know those times when we have a good yell session at God, you know, like that we're sick of one of God's laws, let's say the law of attraction, and, uh, and we just to we totally don't want that law at all. Why did he create that law? It's cruel, it's bad, it's this, it's that, and we go on and on and on about it, and what it, we're really doing is just yelling at God and we want God to change her plans. And do you think God's going to do that? Like, well, God hasn't for a long time, so I don't think God's going to. <laughs> And particularly for you, if she's got to play it, change it for you, then that means she's got to change it for everybody. And that's not going to be very helpful for your long-term development. So a lot of times we have a lot of anger and rage. So let's, cap ang let's look at anger. Anger is annoyance, slight frustration, irritation. Then it goes into anger. Then it goes into rage. And then it goes into hatred. So what, what would you define hatred to be? For me, hatred is when you desire to destroy something. All right. So it could be a person or it could be a thing even, but that's hatred. So anger has this huge slice of emotions involved with it, but all of those emotions are indicating that we're not actually being humble in our relationship with God. So if you find yourself frequently getting upset or annoyed with others, then that's a very good indication that you are not being humble. You are not owning your own emotional feelings, your real core emotional feelings. Now, some of the core feelings are like very difficult to feel, aren't they? Like, for instance, if you have been hurt when you're a little child, and, and, and abused, and you don't understand why you've been abused or hurt, then that's going to be a hard emotion, isn't it, to work your way through. And there's also some emotions like most of us have grown up in our family castle believing that the family loves us. Right? Trust me, you'll really see when somebody loves you if you don't do what they want then you'll really see if they love you. And the majority of times what happens in that situation for us, they get angry with us when we don't do what they want. That's an indication that they don't love us, by the way. Right? See, a lot of times what we're doing is we're, we're telling ourselves these messages about love that we want to believe so that we don't have to feel what it feels like to feel the opposite thing. And this is one of the things we do with a lack of humility. In other words, I don't want to feel that mum and dad didn't love me. And so what I do is I construct this whole world where I believe they loved me. And if somebody says, oh, and, you, and you hear it all the time. I was talking with Anna this morning and Anna, you actually said something to me to, in, this, in this interaction that we had where you were trying to make me believe that Mary's parents were loving Mary even though, or Mary's brother was loving Mary even though he was in a rage with her. And the truth is he doesn't in that state. You see, it's like, but we, we're told the family, the family truth, not God's truth, we're told the family truth. And family truth is the family always is going to care for you, always is going to love you, always is going to stick by you as long as you toe the line. Right? That's the family truth. The God's truth is I'm going to stick by you, this is God speaking to you now, 
I'm going to stick by you no matter what you choose. That's God's truth. You can even choose to hate my guts. This is God's truth. But I will still love you. That's God's truth. You might not feel my love in a state of hatred, but God will still love you in that state. And does God get angry with you? Well, most of us believe he does, you see, because all of our life we grew up with our family getting angry with me whenever I did anything that was outside of their boundaries. And so I grow up feeling from these two parents that love is punishment. Love is anger. Love is rage. Love is... I have all these definitions of what love is inside of me. And so I then attribute all of them to God, right? But all of those things are caused by me being humble. Because if I was humble, I would go into my emotion. When you were three or four or five and you got a belting, in that moment, did you feel loved? Mum mum or dad's there saying... Bible says I've got to, you know, spoil, what is it? Spare the rod, spoil the child. That's right. It's terrible that I've forgotten those things. And, and, and so what do they do? They're smacking you and saying, I don't really want to do this to you, but God says I've got to. What are you just getting told? God's a punishing God who's going to inflict pain on you whenever you get anything wrong. This is why many of you are so afraid to progress because you're so afraid of doing anything wrong. Does that make sense? Because what happened when you were a child, whenever you did anything wrong, you got pain. So now you have mistake, pain, mistakes equal pain. So what do any of us finish up doing then? We don't want to make mistakes, do we? Because we know there's going to be pain. So we do one of two things. One of the first things we do is we give up doing anything. So in other words, we don't take any responsibility for anything in our life because if I get it wrong, then somebody's going to punish me for it. Or I just go and do my own thing and blow the consequences, which is also not a very uh, very loving, self-loving thing to do because there is always consequences with God's laws too. So we finish up through this aspect of not feeling the truth. The truth of that particular example that I gave is mum and dad were not loving me when they were punishing me or getting angry with me or in a rage with me or any of those other states. And by the way, every time you as a parent, right now if you're a parent, are doing those things, you are not loving your child. And you see, this is one of the reasons why we get resistive with humility too. Because we recognise that, oh, what I'm crying about with my mum and dad, I've done hundreds of times with my own child. Right? And so we don't want to come face to face with the personal feelings about how we have damaged others. And so what we then do is maintain the fiction that what we're doing is loving when it's actually not. Can you see that? In be- instead, it would be better for us to face the fact that what I'm doing is not loving and what my mum and dad is doing is not loving and the generations before them, what they did, weren't loving and we've all got to grow up and start to be loving. That would be a more powerful thing to do. But we often don't do that. So anger is a really good indication that we're really folding down and shutting down our connection with God. You see, when we're humble we don't get into anger very much, if at all. When you're at one with God, you won't even get into anger at all. But before you're at one with God, if you get angry frequently, it means that you're still in a state of resistance. And instead of focusing on and trying to punish yourself, which is actually worse, it's going to make the situation worse, it's far better to talk to God about why you're so resistant. And remember we said the other week, that anger is always covering over fear. So there's some fears that you are not facing when you're in an angry state and and you need to start talking or looking at them. (coughs) All right, so for any of you who feel that you don't have fears, do you have anger? Well, if you have anger, then that indicates you actually have quite a lot of fears, but you're just covering them over with Anger. See? Okay.
Yes, Carol. 